When I was first elected to Parliament in 2017, I vowed to campaign on the issue of menopause. I wanted to see menopause treatment be more accessible and more affordable. And my campaign really got underway when I met some of the dedicated menopause campaigners, including Dr. Louise Newson and Diane Danzebrink. And I understood from them the real need to address this issue that affects so many women around the country. I held a round table in Parliament and I brought the Minister, the then Minister for Women's Health, Jackie Dawn Price, to speak to the campaigners and that got the ball rolling. I stood up in PMQs and I questioned the Prime Minister Theresa May on menopause treatment and I asked her to back my campaign to encourage more workplaces to introduce specific policies to help women going through the menopause. So will the Prime Minister please join my campaign which calls on employers to update their health and wellbeing policies so that women can get full information and proper support so they can continue contributing at work. Yeah. Prime Minister. I say to my, on, I thank, thank my honourable friend for raising this issue because obviously this is an issue that I think many members across this House will recognise and uh, recognise is an important issue. And um, we recognise the difficulties that women going through the menopause face. Um, we are encouraging employers to adopt menopause-friendly policies such as flexible working. In 2019, I became the first MP to ever hold a debate specifically on the issue of menopause. Until that time, menopause had only been raised a handful of times in the House of Commons, and we had the chance to debate that in full. And I hesitated before speaking out about this personal issue because I feared in this place I would be regarded negatively by some colleagues or gain an unwarranted stigma attached to me as a menopause campaigner. But when I realised how many women are affected by this issue, how many fail to get the help they need, I realised that it fell to me to speak out, to speak for people that can't be here. And if I didn't do it, who would? And I'm pleased to say that this campaign, as we've just seen, has been universally welcomed by members from across this house. And one of my campaigns was to ensure that menopause education was actually on the school curriculum. I felt it was such an anomaly that young girls and young boys were being told about puberty and about when their periods were starting, but they were given no information at all about what happened much later on in life and actually things that could be happening to their mums or female relatives at that time. And I was absolutely thrilled when Damien Hines, when he was the Education Secretary, agreed to put menopause on the school curriculum and it is on the curriculum now. For the first time ever, young people are actually learning in school about what menopause is and about the wider impacts of it and the impacts on health and well-being. My campaign didn't stop there. I've continued to lobby ministers to raise the profile of menopause. And I'm really so pleased to see the progress that's been made recently. The Health Secretary announced that the Women's Health Strategy will cut the cost of HRT and improve access to treatment and help to tackle some of the taboos and stigmas which still surround menopause. I want to pay tribute to all the campaigners I've met over the years. I know there are so many and I think as a result of all the work that you're doing, some really high profile people in the public eye, some of these women now that we're seeing on our TV screens are talking openly about the menopause and that would not have happened only a few years ago and that would not have happened without you opening the door to this and enabling millions of women's voices around the country to be heard. There is more to do still, but I'm so thrilled with the progress that we've made.